the if statement is a statement that really adds intelligence to our program. It allows us to check a condition and determine whether we're going to run some statements or not run some statements. We call it selection control uh, in that we choose to run some statements or, or to not run those statements based on whatever, whatever that condition is. So far we looked at sequential control. So in our program we run statement one, statement two, statement three, and so on in order until our program's done. So let's take a look at an if statement. So this is the syntax of an if statement. We have an if, the keyword if, and then in parentheses we have some condition. And, and really, I think condition is almost misleading because that condition evaluates to a Boolean value. So really what we have inside of these parentheses is a Boolean value. Okay, so when I run this, it basically what's going to happen is it's going to check this condition or this Boolean value. If it's true, it's going to run the body of the if statement. And the body of the if statement is enclosed in the open curly brace and the closed curly brace. So if this is true, it's going to run the entire body. We can also have the condition as false. If it encounters a false condition, it skips over the body of the if statement and continues on till the, the next statement in the program. I'm just putting in a console array line so we can see it uh, jump over the if body and continue on to the next statement. Okay, so let's run it. So we can see it encounters the condition and or the Boolean value. And because it's true, we're gonna run the body of the if statement. So it's gonna output it is true. It's the output window. Next, we're going to check this false condition. If it's false, it's going to skip the if body and jump to the next statement. So if we run this, we notice that it skips over the false the uh, if body and jumps right to that constant array line statement. So an if statement really it's allowing us to add some condition to our our program. Think about the peanut butter and jelly algorithm, right? Now we can instead of say saying uh, you know, get a piece of bread, spread the peanut butter, spread the jelly. We can say if the user likes peanut butter, then spread peanut butter. Otherwise, skip over that part. Okay, let's take a look at using some conditions. So I'm going to create an integer variable called speed, and I'll set it equal to 36. And I'll say if speed is greater than speed limit. Let me create speed limit up here. Speed limit. I'm going through a neighborhood. It's 25 miles an hour. So we're going to say if the user speed is greater than speed limit, output slow now. Maybe this is one of those signs that flashes slow now a bunch of times as you're driving by. So let's run it. So we have uh, two variables in our memory at the, at the moment is speed and it's equal to 36. Speed limit is equal to 25. Now we use this conditional operator, this greater than sign, and that greater than sign is going to evaluate to a Boolean value. Now in Windows and Visual Studio, if you just hold your cursor over that conditional operator, that greater than sign, it'll tell you what the value is. Uh, here I have it highlighted and you can see it's going to evaluate to true. So we know if it's true what's going to happen, it's going to run the if body. Okay, let's do this. Let's make speed limit 45. And now we're really going slow through the neighborhood.
So we've got two values now in memory. We've got speed and speed limit. Speed is equal to 36, speed limit is equal to 45. And now with this condition, we can see it evaluates to false. So what's gonna happen when it's false? Well, we skip over the if body and we go to the next statement. Okay, there's some other uh, clauses we can add to the if statement. One is the else. Thank you. Thank you for driving safely. Thank you for driving safely. Okay, so in this case, we have now one statement. It's, it's still the if statement, but it has two clauses. So we have the if clause and the else clause. And what happens is if the if is false, it falls through and always runs the else. If the if clause is true, it runs the if clause and then it ends the statement. So from here we run the if body, we encounter the end of the if body, and then we jump to the next statement after the entire if statement altogether. Uh, so it's important to note with an if statement, we're only ever going to run one clause. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. So we encounter speed is greater than speed limit, and in this case it's false. So we're gonna to jump to the else clause, we run the else clause, and then we're done with the statement. Let's look at it with a true. So now we're going 55 and a 45. So now the if condition evaluates to true. We're going to run the if body, and then we'll be done with the statement. Now we're at the end of the if, and it jumps to the next statement in our program. We call the else clause the default clause. Basically, if it falls through the entire statement and gets to the else, it always runs it. Okay, so one other clause we can add is the else if. And the else if is, uh, we're allowed to add as many as we want. It's optional, just like the else clause. And it has a condition associated with it. So in this one, let's say if speed is equal to speed limit, and here's the conditional operator to check if two values are equal to each other. It's, it's like the equality operator. Different than the assignment operator. This is the assignment operator. The assignment operator is a right to left operation, it takes this value and puts it into this bucket or variable in memory. This operator equals equals checks to see if this value is, is the same value as this value and returns a Boolean value of true or false. Okay. So in this case now, if we've got a speed that equals the speed limit, we can see that the if is false. It's not, speed is not greater than speed limit, so that returns false. So we're gonna to skip to the next clause in the statement. Now it's gonna check the condition is speed equal to speed limit, and it is true. So we run the else if body, and then just like we did with the if or the else, we're now we're done with the statement. So let me reiterate that a little bit. This is one statement. It's an if statement with three clauses, if, an else if, and an else. Now, we can have um, as many conditions as we want. Uh, we could do this. We could say if, I'm not sure what the technical definition of this would be, but if we said speed, oh, speed is greater than 
speed limit times two. I think that's something like reckless endangerment or something. Say way too fast. So in this case, we've got what condition that says the speed is greater than speed limit times two, I'll put this message. Otherwise, if speed is greater than speed limit, I'll put this message. Otherwise, if speed is equal to speed limit, I'll put this message. And if none of those are true and we encounter the else, notice there's no condition here, then we run this output statement. Okay, so if we make this 100, and run it. We'll hit that breakpoint and pause for us. Let me close some of these windows. Okay, so we run this. Now the first condition is true, and again, how many clauses can we run in an if statement? We only run one, right? So as soon as this runs, now we're done with the statement. So a few rules to consider. First of all, I would review all the conditional operators. There's greater than, less than. Uh, we have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than, less than, is equal to, this is not equal to, uh, and we can actually change the, the uh, bullet. So say we have some condition, we can change the value to the inverse. So if it's true, return false. If it's false, return true by putting an exclamation mark in front of it. That's the not operator. So I'd review those um, Boolean and conditional operators. Um, remember these rules, There's there always has to be an if clause. This is the only mandatory clause in the statement. We can have zero or more else ifs. So we could have one else if, we could have no, is, no else ifs, like our first and second example today. Uh, we could have uh, 30 else ifs if, if we needed to. That sounds like it would be a little messy in code, but we can have as many of those as we want. You can have zero or one else clause. You can only have one else clause. Something to keep in mind, all of the else ifs and the if have conditions associated with them in parentheses, or uh, really just a Boolean value. So you can actually have a variable that's a Boolean value. You could say bool is going too fast, and just have that Boolean value in there. Or you, or you can have a condition that eventually evaluates to a Boolean value. Uh, and that's the normal case, I guess. Um, another thing to keep in mind is after this condition, so after we have this if or else if, and this condition in parentheses, you don't want to put a semicolon there. That's a, a common mistake I see a lot in early programming. The reason is uh, C Sharp, the runtime environment, thinks that that is an empty statement so this is no longer the if body. Instead, this is the if body. So make sure you leave those semicolons out. No semicolon here, no semicolon here, no semicolon here, okay? And if you don't remember that, just look at a, at a working example and use it. Or type the example in that I'm showing you here and use that as an example, okay?